Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm one of the technicians at Dove Lewis and I'm going to talk to you today about avian anatomy. One of the things I love most about birds is they're truly unique. They're not just small cats or dogs and um, their anatomy brings a lot of different challenges to therapies we provide. So birds, I like to think of them as little dinosaurs um, or even little aliens because kind of the normal things we think of kind of go out the window with them. So anatomical review of avians, we should talk about things like they have feathers and bills and scales. So those are definitely considerations. They're also bipedal. They walk on two feet. They are overposition, which means they're egg layers. Um, something like temperature isn't as useful in birds because their temperature is quite a bit higher than our normal mammal patients and it fluctuates a lot throughout the day. Another thing that's special about them is they have pneumatic bones. So it means that their bones are connected to their respiratory tract. And that's something that we need to consider when we're administering things through something like an IO catheter is that, that those two things are connected. They also have a renal portal system, which is really neat. It's, um, there's two circulatory systems. So there's like a, the normal circulatory system and then they have kind of a secondary circulatory system in the caudal half of their body. And what that does is allows for more efficient um, circulation to tissues. But we need to consider it when we're doing things like IV injections because anything given in the lower caudal portion of the body will be directed directly to the kidneys to filter out. They also don't have a diaphragm. So just like dogs and cats, they have a thoracic and abdominal cavity. Avian species have just a salomic cavity. So it, that will bring us into talking about the respiratory system, which is probably the most unique part of the avian species. They, you and I and dogs and cats, we have an in and out breathing system where Avian species have a set, um, a whole set of air sacs, so usually about nine in total, and those act as the bellows to lungs. Their lungs are stationary, so they're not driven by, they don't have a diaphragm, so the air sacs act as the movement through the lungs. This one-way breathing system allows for much more efficient gas exchanges, which is really important when you think about the bird's necessity to um, be able to fly at really high elevations. Um, and then again, remembering that those bones are connected to the respiratory tract as well. The reason that we have to know about this is that something like a fractured, um, a fractured humerus could affect their breathing pattern. Also, when you're giving injections, you have to be aware that there are air sacs all the way to the caudal most portions of their salomic cavities. So inadvertent air sac puncture is a possibility. So remember all those things when you're working with birds. Um, they're neat animals, but they need special considerations.